Hey, good morning. This is Dan with Puts Ponds and Gardens. I'm out here in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Got a call from an existing client on a pond we did not install, but we've maintained it over the last so many years. So he's been seriously losing a lot of water. I didn't really get an indication as how much water. Um, he said it was just below the skimmer opening, which leads me to believe that the, uh, the seal on the skimmer just needs to be redone. I came out here this morning and let me turn the camera around. I'll show you what my findings were. All right, so as you can see, it's fall here in Michigan and actually it's a nice day. It's about 58 degrees out, but the leaves are falling. This homeowner had netted his pond. When I got out here, noticed the water level was very, very low. There's a skimmer opening there. Leads me to believe it's not the skimmer opening or the seal around the opening of that skimmer. That's the problem. When your water level gets down here this low, the leak is uh, at, it's at the bottom of the pond. Well, look at the bottom of the pond. Might be asking what that is at the bottom. To me, old school way of dealing with sludge in the pond. 35 years we've been installing ponds and this is not a bad looking pond. It's actually really nice. It would look nicer if it had some water in it. That bottom drain it's either the seal on the bottom drain or the piping that leads from there up into the skimmer that leaks. Right now, the only benefit to having that bottom drain is it's the only place for his fish to go because when the water level went down, the fish took off and went into that pipe and they're hiding out in there. So what I'm gonna suggest to this homeowner is drain the rest of the water out, take out all those screws around the bottom plate, bottom drain plate and we just do a simple patch, eliminate this bottom drain 100% and we'll be golden. Um, I'm gonna wait to hear back from the homeowner and let's see what he says. If he's set on keeping this bottom drain in here, um, I can do a reseal on it, but we have no way of knowing the problem is not coming from the piping that runs from the bottom drain to the actual um, the pump itself. So what I'll do is um, I'll wait to hear back from him. Once I hear back from him, then we'll take that direction and go from there. Stay tuned. <laughs>
If this were on and pumps drawing in, in theory, your sludge in the bottom of a pond will be drawn into the skimmer and then put up into the top of your biological filter. Some of the drawbacks on that type of thinking is the, primarily the reason why I'm out here, eventually they're gonna leak. And when they leak, you've got one of two options. Some more nature going around here. Um, you've got one of two options. Okay, if it does leak, you can go for option one, get rid of the bottom drain, and then clean all this up, get it nice and dry, and patch a liner on top of it. So option two is to repair that seal. Not an easy task. I personally will not warranty a seal on a bottom drain. We will never install a bottom drain in a pond, whether you ask us to or not. Cutting a hole in a liner, to me, you're asking for trouble. Why do it? In a backyard ecosystem pond, if this bottom section has no gravel, I didn't take it out. We did not build this pond. If that bottom section had a thin layer of gravel, that's more place for beneficial bacteria to colonize. Remember, beneficial bacteria are a living organism. They need a food source. Guess what that food source is? It's muck. It wants to thrive on muck. So what we're doing is we're creating a balancing act in a pond between beneficial bacteria, good algae, and plants. Beneficial bacteria, if you break it down, is nothing more than a, is a, a billion little plants in a pond. So if I have a light layer of gravel on here, I've got more bedding area for my beneficial bacteria to colonize. Do we get muck in there? Yes, but it's below your thin layer of gravel. You're not gonna get that muck buildup. Once a year, the ponds get drained. They do not get power washed. We've talked about that in other videos. Power washing a pond destroys that biofilm that's on the surface of all the rock. And Mother Nature put it there. You take it off, she's gonna put it right back on. This is a pond, it's not a pool. We don't wanna power wash this. We kinda wanna work with Mother Nature instead of against Mother Nature. So that being said, let me head back up to the Jeep. Let me go get some more of my tools and I'm gonna get this thing patched up. We're going to, once it's patched up, I'll let it, I'll let it dry for maybe 20 minutes or so. I'm gonna put a thin layer of water in here just to cover it. We're gonna let it sit for 24 hours. We're gonna rely on the homeowner to let us know whether or not we're losing any water. And if we're losing any water, we wanna get back out here, investigate other areas. All right, let's get going. <laughs> Okay, so to prep this, um, I've gotten all the, the slimy, gooey sludge off the bottom of the pond. So what we're going to do is we're going to rough this up here. We're going to take a piece of liner from our patch kit here. We're going to cut that to size. Once we cut that to size, so we use these green scrubby pads. And what we'll do is just like patching an old bike tire. Remember back when you were a kid? You take a uh, scrubby. What you want to do is you want to scrub to roughen this up. It cleans it, gets any residual algae off, and then um, makes a good bond for our primer. Now what we use is Firestone Quick Prime Plus Primer. We'll put a thin layer of that on here. Once we do that, we want to make sure that it flashes. What, what do I mean by flashes? In layman's term, we want it to dry. Once that dries up, then put our liner down we're going to do an extra step is we're going to make it twice as strong twice as thick in this area right here we've got our cover tape we want to use the six inch cover tape here and it's sticky on one side but we don't rely on we don't rely on this to stick to the the actual liner itself you've got to use the firestone quick prime plus primer okay so i'm a pond builder and I'm not a great uh, producer of <laughs> vlogs. Forgot to hit the time lapse again to show you how I did all that. So basically what I did is I used the Firestone Quick Prime Plus and I went over each side, cut each piece separately of my um, cover tape and then I wait for it, waited for it to flash or dry just a little bit so it 
so it's tacky and make sure that we got everything down 100 percent we overlapped all of the cover tape going all the way around uh, we rolled all the seams made sure that we had no bubbles 100 percent connection with the cover tape to the actual liner itself so we've got a piece of liner this is the existing hole right here and i put a piece of liner on top of that and i adhered it with the quick firestone quick prime plus once i did that cleaned up around the outside of it primed it again each piece separately so we're going to let this sit for about 20 minutes i'm going to clean up put my equipment away i'll get the hose out we're going to fill this up with water homeowner's going to wait 24 hours and cross your fingers this is another job complete